Thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome once again. We, before we start the plenary, I would like to invite um, the different uh, panelists for today. I would start uh, with uh, Colonel Francis uh, Gabo, who is the CEO of the Rwanda Space Agency. Rwanda Space Agency has been known for establishing a national geospatial hub where they help all policy makers to deliver insights directly. There's Dr. Tidian Watara from the African Union Commission who has been pivotal in setting up all the groundwork for an African space agency. Mr. Fabrice Rodriguez uh, from Airbus who will be helping us understand a little bit more about the One Atlas platform and all the geospatial work that they have done. And last but not least, Dr. Benjamin Coates, who is from the European Space Agency, as you're all familiar with the Copernicus uh, program, which has helped you know, democratize uh, Earth observation to the rest of the world. Later on, we will also be having a video from Mrs. Avi, Papa Tonyu, I hope I got that right, from the European Commission, who will be uh, giving us a five-minute uh, video speech. Without further ado, um, I'd like to invite uh, Colonel Francis, who will uh, get us started, and then um, after that, we hope to have a Q&A. Just to let you know, after this, we will be have the Q&A, we will have lunch, and after the lunch session, uh, for those that are interested or who will be participating in the hackathon. Yeah, it's a privilege for us to be here with you and to be part of this uh, very important event. It's a pleasure indeed for us to contribute during this conference that aims to promote the use of space and geospatial technologies for Africa sustainable development. Over the recent decades, there has been a recognition of the economic potential and the extent to which space-based services can support national development agenda. It is in this perspective that the government of Rwanda has established the Rwanda Space Agency two years ago with the mandate to spearhead the development of the Rwanda space sector. And Rwanda's space and remote sensing program under the Rwanda Space Agency was developed with the idea of applying space technologies for the benefit of priority sectors of our economy and socioeconomic development of our countries. So the program involves mainly a development of three principles, principal capabilities. Number one, we use data obtained from different various applications on ground and here I can uh, highlight that, that we're using a lot of images, satellite images from uh, partners like uh, uh, the Copernicus program, uh, Landsat, Sentinel, and other uh, partners who are providing space program, space uh, imageries. And secondly, we also establish and operate ground stations for spare spacecraft control, data transfer with data processing archival. Here, uh, I want to emphasize that in Rwanda, we are in the process of uh, building a teleport, which will be used to uh, uh, host different ground station antennas. Uh, and we hope that with this will help us to be able to receive data from different satellites and be able to distribute them or use them locally. And thirdly, we are planning to design, build our own space assets. In this decade, in this uh, era, we believe that space has been uh, opened and uh, it has been easier for new entrants like uh, developing countries to be also a nectar into the global space uh, ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are all aware, data from remote sensing satellites are used for various applications. At RSA, we are working towards developing models that will be answering priority needs in agriculture, disaster management, weather monitoring, and urban planning. Most of use cases, more use cases 
will be developed at Rwanda, Rwanda Space Agency as we are forging skills and we are developing partnership with academia, private sectors in order to develop the overall space sector in Rwanda. And our aim is to become a one-stop center that will enable the growth of startups in remote sensing. And in this, we welcome the partnership we have with uh, academia and private sector. We, we believe that our plan will pave the way and contribute to develop our partners' ability to use remote sensing for societal applications. We are also looking forward to develop a big number of Rwandan youth able to develop solutions based on the analysis and combination of open data layers using maps as well as developing new web and mobile applications. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as this conference is expected to exchange views on the use of space and geospatial technology from Africa we want, we in Rwanda Space Agency, we are eager to partner with remote sensing experts here present and explore opportunities to cooperate for the benefits of the sector, such as agriculture, urban planning, climate, and weather prediction. Our team in Rwanda Space Agency will be present throughout this week, and we will be, we will be delighted to further the discussions in each one's here respective business area. The possibilities for remote sensing are indeed limitless and we make, we'll make sure that these are harnessed in the most effective way. I would like to conclude by thanking the organizers of this session. I would also forward an interactive, I'm, we are also looking forward for a very interactive session in the next few minutes. We all thank you for your attention, thank you for coming to Rwanda, and thank you for your contribution. Thank you, Murakoze Asante Sana. At 5 meter resolution, today, with player Neo, we can monitor the same site several times a day at 30 centimeter. What a journey and a great asset for our industry. Airbus has a large constellation of satellites, radar, and optical. And we all know that it's not a one size fits all matter. First, Airbus' approach has always been to offer multi sensor, multi resolution, and multi source data. We hence benefit from a comprehensive constellation of 17 Earth observation satellites, 14 optical satellites, ranging from 22 meter to 30 centimeter with Playa Neona and four radar satellites ranging from 40 meter to 30, 25 centimeter resolution. As we speak, all our satellites in orbit are observing the Earth and assisting our customer in their decision-making process. We've been delivering valuable data for more than 35 years, providing Earth observation product and system and services to a various range of trust customer and partner worldwide. And so, within many different industries. 2021 was an exciting year. We launched our first two Player Neo satellites, now fully operational. Player Neo is our new very high resolution constellation at 30 centimeters. It all started on April 28, 2021, with the successful launch of Player Neo 3 from Kuhu on a Vegalon tree. The second one, Player Neo 4, was successful launch, successfully launched on August 16, 2021, also from Kuru on a Big Island show. Player Neo satellites have been entirely self-funded, designed, manufactured by Airbus. They are smaller, lighter, more agile, accurate, and reactive than the competition. And they are the first of their class whose capacity are fully commercially available to you. Player Neo 3 and 4 are now delivering their images at full capacity. The resource of the satellite are 100% commercially available and ensuring 30 centimeter resolution data supply for at least the next 12 years. 
We are fully on track to launch two more by the end of the year. By the way, they are at the moment arriving in, in Kubu. It will double our commercial acquisition capacity of native 30 centimeter imagery for our customer with four agile identical satellites in the constellation offering tasking and intraday revisit at any point of Earth. It's going to be the first European 30 centimeter constellation. As I say, fully funded by Airbus and operated by Airbus. And based on the lean fast approach, Airbus developed this constellation with 75% of innovation to solve all the technical challenges. In short, Airbus is constantly looking to provide users in the best in class imagery data and services. That has always been our focus and will continue to be. Now let's jump into stunning images and characteristics that will provide a game changing capability for innovations and services. Play and Neo imagery is um, quality is excellent, even higher than we expected. This is the number one feedback uh, that, uh, from our customer. Here you can see a Play and Neo image on Sydney Airport, and you can clearly see the line of the taxiway, the vehicles on the car parks. Playan Neo is best in class when it comes to native location accuracy. With under 3.5 meter, it's a unique commercial feature. With the Playan Neo constellation, you can get an image where and when needed. Covering the entire globe, even at extreme latitude, you know that every day a Playan Neo will fly over UAOI at least twice a day and according to the latitude up to four. Playan Neo satellite at task at each orbit, thanks to the two polar stations, so every 45 minutes at the moment. It accommodates evolving tasking plan and provides extreme reactivity. When it comes to coverage capacity, Playan Neo can acquire up to 2 million square kilometer at 30 centimeter every single day. It's a world first. To enable a new application in the field of maritime and vegetation, we have included two new spectral bands to play and new, Red Edge and Deep Blue. Deep Blue was multiple purposes and a new application like better characterization of atmospheric factors, better deazing and retrieving information in dark shade area for better defense and intelligence application. Coastal and aquatic mapping up to 35 meter deep, bathymetry, gasology, wells and shark detection, plastic monitoring, and so on. Red Edge is primarily for vegetation application. More accurate crop de development information for precision agriculture. Leaf Aver Index to qualify and quantify crop foliage development. Chlorophyll content to assess crop nutrition and earth status. Better monitoring of forest with tree replanting and deforestation, and even camouflage detection. To make Play and Neo images even look better, we just launched this month Play and Neo HD15. It enhances the visual clarity of the image, making it easier to read and analyze existing information, only possible to the, due to the very high quality of the native product. We are also launching Want to start? We are also launching a new class of fully automatic player Neo Mosaic built on the cloud. It's automatic, seamless, color balance, and at the country scale. Last but not least, here is a high precision elevation model with 50 centimeter posting from player Neo stereo images over the city of Marrakesh in Morocco. How to access these stunning products? With the One Atlas web portal, you are the command of the satellite. You can request imagery easily from the portal or through the app, its API. From the more urgent situation to AI monitoring, you can be sure that you get the information you need at the right time. We are literally giving our customer the joystick of the Play and Neo satellite 
and we are the only one to offer such a service. As you may have understood, PNO can tackle a wide range of market needs thanks to a combination of multiple assets, resolution, revisit, coverage capacity, and not only. Among the main vertical markets, we find mapping agency, cadastre and insurers, location-based services with the GAFAM, the navigation system, autonomous car, but also defense, energy, infrastructure, and finally, aviation, maritime, forestry, and agriculture. The usage of space technology has been a focus, uh, focus on skyrocketing for the last decade in Africa. 13 African countries launched 44 satellites. And space is a key tool and asset throughout the continent to bolster its growth and sustainability wave. Monitoring the land use ensure a sustainable urban growth. Organizing population census, natural resource management, protecting environment and wildlife, among many others. The, space, the African space ambition are clear, and Airbus is here more than ever to support your initiatives. So why Play and Neo? Because Play and Neo is performant, reliable, suited to, to various needs, and available 100% to you. Play and Neo ensure regular access anywhere on Earth and at least twice a day or more, according to the latitude of the area. Because you always know that our satellite will be flying over UIY, placing your terror testing request from your, from your computer become uh, very, very simple. And then it becomes straightforward to monitor area as you get qualitative and comparable imagery. With Play and Neo, you can see the world at 30 centimeters. Now let me, let me show you uh, a stunning image of a Kigali in HD5, as my colleague is switching uh, uh, to the images. And uh, it's gonna be available in the booth, so everyone, I invite you to come on the booth and take a look at that. You can scroll and navigate on through the image. Uh, it's really uh, very impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabrice, um, for showing us a bit more about all the capabilities of Player Neo. Next, we would like to hear from uh, Dr. Benjamin Coates from the European Space Agency. Thank you. Good morning, or better, good afternoon, very soon. Can you perhaps upload my presentation? <coughs> okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for the invitation to speak here. I'm very honored to uh, present you uh, how we from Europe uh, will want to and are already collaborating with you uh, in Africa. It's, it's very important for us to make the link from, from Europe to Africa and make sure that the different assets from space are being used and as a public good for everybody. Having in, having in mind that space is very global in nature, coming from around the, the globe, uh, circling our Earth in, in a very high visit, as we just heard, in ever higher resolution. So this type of information we want to make accessible to everybody, uh, European, Africans, international partners, uh, the same. So that is why I put this presentation into the context of an African-European partnership, but also keeping in mind that we are talking here in an international um, scientific community, 40 countries, Many of you are scientists, many of you are experts, and science is an international diplomacy, so we really would like to make sure to use this kind of community aspect to link together to develop new innovative applications and algorithms to really bring the best out of this data which is available from space. So just, this works, no? So just shortly introducing ESA, it's an it's a intergovernmental organization for service uh, purposes for space. Um, you see there's an 
quite a bit of satellites are already launched, and yes, we do need a, a considerable amount of budget to make this work. That is why ESA consists out of 22 different member states in Europe, because we need to share the risk, share the burden to investment in space. That is something which I think is, well, it's the, the basis of why ESA, ESA exists. And I, I think I heard that the African Space Agency is now coming up uh, online, and I think that is also something which African Space Agency with then 50 plus member states will be having a very interesting um, role to play to make sure that space is being available in Africa. So we are really excited to hear that we're getting soon, very soon a sister um, in Africa and we are looking forward to collaborate with the African Space uh, Agency as we have done with you already. So just shortly, our, our purpose, our vision is to take the poles of the Earth in any particular impossible way from space that you see here some different type of applications and uh, observations being put into uh, information layers uh, for from gravity to fire monitoring and atmospheric uh, pollution but uh, also very important there are natural resources like water agriculture and so on um, that having in mind this is global as I said but also a um, very important Africa you see very much in the center here of all these globes and uh, if you look at it, uh, Africa, I uh, always like to mention, is a very big country, uh, has a huge amount of resources and to play a role here with Earth observation to move into the digital society I think is a very important one which we should all work together. So just giving you an overview of the different uh, space assets that ESA is putting into, into space. Um, we started in the 90s, but uh, it, yeah, we moved on uh, up to today. Most importantly, you see here in the middle the Sentinels, which we launched on behalf of the European Commission. But there's also a number of um, scientific, uh, uh, scientific satellites, and I highlight here the upcoming Biomass, which is um, launched next year mission. That will help us uh, to get with higher uh, L-band and uh, P-band uh, um, resolution in, into the forest monitoring part. FLEX is about fluorescence, so that's an innovative observations for the photosynthetic uh, uh, observations. All that is cutting edge science, which I hope we can all together exploit um, in the future. Then you th see we are moving forward, and I will go in the second to the expansion mission, so in Sentinel, but also um, keeping in mind that we will launch after 2030 the next generation of Sentinel 1 and 2. So we are thinking for the next decades, making sure that these observations are operational, long-term, sustainable, available for the public good. So just a reminder, I know you, you know Sentinels, uh, uh, which are already running, and uh, we know from GMS in Africa it's very much used. Um, so Sentinel 1, 2, and 3, they are fully operational, but 4 and 5 in the atmospheric part as well. All in good health, but the Sentinel 1, we lost Sentinel 1B in, uh, in December and we, we tried to recover it. It will be not recoverable, but since it's an operational program, Sentinel 1C has been already uh, built and we will launch it in uh, the second quarter of next year, making sure that there is operational continuity. Just to say what is available from these data, um, there is already 4.2 petabytes uh, available over Africa, collected over the time from 2012, and every year there's a 1.1 petabyte coming on top of it. And we want to make this data available. We do that, oh right, that's too fast. No, okay. Sorry. So the future is uh, where you see here the, the, the current uh, Sentinels, but the future is we want to grow this family of six into something which is um, bigger, if the presentation allows that. We have a no, no, another six Sentinels uh, being up in, uh, in preparation. They're fully in the design process and being, can you perhaps physically advance? Yeah, here we go. Six uh, additional, which we call expansion missions. Um, they are um, complementing the, the current Sentinels, but uh, from starting from 2025, we will launch these new generations uh, 
um, of Sentinels because we, together with the European Commission, have um, um, tried to un identify observational gaps which exist in the moment and trying to understand what observation types are missing. So here you see uh, six of them. One of them is very much about the, the emission of climate change um, gas uh, house uh, um, emissions. So these is about climate change. We had the observational gap there, but also about agriculture. The LSTM will provide 50 meter thermal observation every two days. Uh, hyperspectral will give you also information about agriculture and forestry, biodiversity, and then Rose L and as well Chima there very much about uh, giving you soil moisture, but also forestry um, um, with an L-band uh, um, observation. So all these observations will come up uh, online within the next five, six years. I really hope that is something which is very fruitful for the scientific context uh, we are talking here. So making sure that these data is all available to African institutions and uh, scientists, we have been working together with the European Commission, the African um, Union Commission, to, make, to ensure that these data will be delivered to regional centers. Uh, so there is an agreement in place signed by the African Union Commission and the European Commission that these can be hosted and redisseminated across the continent. And we are looking into these six different uh, organizations, but also others, to make sure that they can receive, host, own this type of data and redisseminate it. So that is uh, one way of disseminating data. And we had just a, a discussion two weeks ago online with the, the community. And one thing was also very visible the online, the cloud computing part is very important. And yes, we have done the online access to everybody since some years, but we are also trying to, to use the type of um, uh, on, uh, cloud computing uh, capabilities with the, what we call the DSs. Um, they have been very useful and to, to move into this area, but we now going to go into a new type of data service, uh, which will give us the next 10 years continuity. I keep on clicking, but nothing happens. Um, so we have 10 years of continuity here, also making sure that this type of data will be available over APIs, over the right Jupyter notebooks to, to be available on the cloud for computing. And so that you can bring your algorithms to the data. Right, I'm trying to speed up. Um, so making sure that these data sets are actually not only be available and accessible um, in a technical way, but also be useful in terms of providing information layers. We have a number of programs, uh, starting from the Climate Change Initiative, where we bring uh, essential climate variables into play, uh, in, into life, but then also working with the EU Africa Initiative, which is building on the Tiger Initiative, which I have been working with you over the last few decades into a new way of working together and Zoltan Zaltori will give you a deep dive into that and tomorrow is the keynote. It, that is about really about research. Um, but then we also have a global development assistant um, program where we work with international finance institutions in the client countries here in Africa to sh make sure that this comes also into operations and that is something which uh, is like kind of mainstreaming this information. I mentioned the EU Africa initiative, and uh, you will get the details tomorrow. But just to make sure that there is, um, can you please, please keep on clicking twice? Um, that there is uh, activities ongoing, um, um, working together with African research institutions. Uh, there was already a call with a uh, tandem partnering European and African scientists together. There is one open to the currently, and I encouraging to, to talk to Zoltan, perhaps you raise your hand so everybody see, see you, um, to really make sure that you can also respond to that one. But tomorrow you will get more details. So then the global development assistant one you see, we work over eight different sectors. Um, we have been doing that already in a different program over the last 10 years. So there is already 35 projects in African countries, 30 African countries uh, available working with the African Development Bank, but also the World Bank, EFERT, and the Global Environment Fund, making sure that there is money which is in the development sector being aligned to make sure capacity building is there and, um, and skill transfers done. 
So I will jump over that. It's a number of innovative application parts uh, based on Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2, having your 10 meter land cover uh, part. Can you keep on clicking? So also for the marine sector, and uh, if you come up for the next one, urban environment uh, expansion, and finally, some uh, irrigation application. So all that you want to do in collaboration with streamers in Africa, and if you can just keep on clicking five times, um, you will see that there is a, a number of different ways how we work together. We, we launch research calls, we have trainings together, we make the data access available, as we, we already alluded to, and there's a, a number of trainings. Uh, we support the hackathon, which is starting this afternoon together with the African Union Commission, and you would see a lot of nice uh, images and happy faces behind me if the technology would work. Um, that is about you. It's about involving people in the right manner and in, yeah, in a collaborative, collaborative spirit. My last slide, and then I'm done. It's really about, if there's one more click, it's about how to bring this further between Europe and, and, and Africa. There has been last year a, a manifesto. It was a me meeting bringing all together institutional players in Portugal, there is a manifesto with a roadmap already in play. There was the African European Summit in, in February this year. And you know, there is a lot of political cloud and, and, and initiative going, which will help us to move forward together. And if you keep on clicking, there is this type of um, initial uh, initiatives which we hope we can make use of to bring um, us all in a better way working together. And with that, I would conclude and I apologize for the technical hiccups. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin from uh, the European Space Agency. Um, it would be good, segue now, to also learn more about GMS in Africa and who better place than the man who's been preparing the African Union for an African Space Agency. Dr. Tidian, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Joseph. I would say we all are building the outer space program for Africa. Uh, we are just uh, the visible face and uh, the messenger. Um, Joseph, how much time I have? Two minutes, three minutes? Five to seven. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your generosity. Uh, I would say if there is uh, only one message to take with you in your luggage, we have to work together. The matter of space is complex. Because of its nature, because of the cost, because of the skill set needed, nobody, no institution, no country can afford space alone. Therefore, there is a necessity to work together. My quick presentation will not talk to you about the science of the matter. You know it better than me. I told you this morning, I have my masters here, I have my pioneers, I have my professors here. And you know more about the scientific matter. This is not my call. My call is to quickly tell you what we are doing why we are doing it, and how we should do it together. Can someone help me, please? My title, some people think that this title, are provoke, it is to provoke. No. We just are telling you the truth. Africa is the new Eldorado for the space business. I want to challenge anybody to tell me the contrary. My reasons are very simple and factual. It is the second biggest continent in the world. Our natural resources, be on land and in the oceans and waters, are numerous. We need to control them. We need to exploit them efficiently. Secondly, 
The population of Africa is more than 1 billion inhabitants. We are biggest or among the biggest consumers of the space product and services. Let's move from the consumer role to the actor role. And we are capable and we should do it. And in doing it, can you we have to look at what we can do. This is the what here. I don't want to come to that. We talk about climate change, food securities. These are the priorities of Africans. Okay. Let's talk about the same Africa. This is the Africa, factual Africa I'm talking about. It is a huge continent. All is to be done from the scratch. Please. These are the African pillars, socio-economic development pillars. And with these pillars, we have some challenges. As I said, these pillars are interlinked, connected. Not only one government can do it. You see, all these things, we have to handle them together not only from our own country perspectives, but also for the regional and continental perspectives. When we talk about space, after several years in being this business, I will tell you we are just providing two things. We are providing the data and we are providing information. End of story. All the activities are to get there. Let's talk about the grand segment. Those who are engineers working on that, it is to provide what? Tools to measure and to, pro to provide data and information. The space segment will be, we've been talking about satellites. What the satellites are doing, it is the same thing. And you have in the middle what we call downstream segment where we provide services. All that to allow decision makers to develop policies, to develop regulatory tools, etc. Secondly, to allow developments or development agencies or decision makers to build infrastructure. And the last one, to assure our security. Space is right away in the middle. Alors, le capital humain africain est une valeur sûre, c'est une opportunité pour nous à saisir. On a 60% de la population qui est très jeune. Cette population doit être formée. Et cette population, en la formant, cette jeunesse va prendre le futur et le devenir de notre continent dans le domaine spatial. Nous avons un marché incroyable. Et vous allez le voir dans d'autres slides. Alors, le paysage, il y a à boire et à manger pour tout le monde. Je peux vous dire que l'Afrique est remplie d'acteurs dans le domaine de l'observation de la Terre. Mais est-ce que nous nous parlons comme il se doit Est-ce que nous utilisons nos ressources de façon à harmoniser la gestion et l'utilisation de ces ressources La réponse est non. Nous devons encore une fois travailler ensemble. I'm running after the time given to me. Ça, c'est important. Vous voyez, nous avons plus de 300 et quelques milliards de dollars engrangés par l'espace. Mais vous allez voir que l'Afrique, nous parlons de 7 milliards, et dans les 7 milliards, l'observation de la Terre est presque invisible. C'est autour de 1%, 1,40. Si nous ajoutons les satellites, de l'observation, nous sommes à 2%. Au lieu d'être découragé, c'est une opportunité, une immense opportunité qui s'offre aux chercheurs et aux utilisateurs. Challenges. I don't want to talk about the connectivity. We all know that. The skill set, I underline that. Let me move on, please. You see, we have to seize the opportunity. We have several available technologies, 
strengthening and empowering us. Let's seize that opportunity to do our space business or EO business. The Pan-African effort, quickly, we already had a space policy and strategy since 2016. We are implementing it. Two key achievements, the establishment of the African Space Agency. It is a reality, as I told you this morning, young people, even young professionals, be ready. The recruitment, it is your recruitment. Make sure to come and take your place and build this Africa. The second one, I don't want to talk about that because you all know that the space policy and strategy and the African Space Agency's role will be to coordinate the space matters on the continent, to create a kind of regulatory framework from a country to another country. Sometimes the data sharing policy even doesn't exist or where it exists it can be conflictual. We have a lot of satellites in this space. We are not participating in the space debris discussions, space traffic discussions, all these regulatory issues. We have to be there as a continent. 55 countries we are talking about. All happening uh, above our heads. We are not part of the discussion. This is not fair, but nobody will bring us there. It's up to us to move there, to take our place. The African Space Agency, I'll talk about that, please. Can you move on? The Pan-African uh, you know, Space uh, uh, Science Institute. We have to finalize it. It will be in South Africa, but it is just one component in the landscape of the, school, uh, the schools of education uh, academy institutions. This one will not resolve at all all the problems, but it is just a signal to say that as Africa, we are interested in empowering our kids. We made several studies, several cooperations are undergoing, but one important one is GMS in Africa, Global Monitoring for Environment, the only and unique program at the continental level bringing together North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, working together in using Earth Reservation for Sustainable Development. And it is a reality. Please. Once again, thanks to the European Union, through the European Commission, we uh, succeeded in having uh, the phase one of the program. I gave you some numbers, more than 120 institutions. I gave you some numbers. Uh, about the uh, people trained. I gave you some numbers. I will say 5,000. We have a digital learning, a distance learning platform created. There are many, many achievements. And the second phase has started in January until 2025. We'll be there. Please. The principle of GMS is simple. All start with the end users. You scientists, you are there to support the end users. You scientists, you are there to listen to the end users. Therefore, all start with the end users, all end with the end users. They are from the beginning, you have to start from the scratch, thinking of them, about their need, and how you can address their need. But you cannot do that in a traditional way. We have to do that together. It is a common journey. These are the numbers I quoted. If you look at the services we developed, we have 17 applications on natural resources and 94 uh, African institutions were involved. Please. 15 applications on marine. And again, don't worry, this presentation will be shared. For those who want to go to the details, I'll be here with my team and uh, we'll make sure that we address all your questions. Please. GMS and Africa phase two, please. We'll continue with the phase one output, what, but we only add two new output, very important and critical output. You scientists, you are always crying, and I was part of you for money. After my project, there is no new money. To be able to get money, you have to be aligned with the priorities of the policy makers or the policy decision makers. You also have to be aligned with the priorities of the institutions. 
If I go to Dr. Emmanuel Nkorosisa, the Director General of Garcia Mardi, and I present to him a proposal, and this proposal is not addressing any of his priorities for getting support. He will be polite to you, but he won't be able, even if he wants, he won't be able to support you. Let align our business with the priorities. This is why there is one put policy and institutional framework. Whatever you do should be aligned with the priorities. The second output, if you allow me, Joseph, is the synergy. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Let pull back a little bit. Let look at out of the box. When I have two dollars to do wetland, should I start doing wetland knowing that around me I have several other institutions working on wetlands? Let approach them. Let work together. Let strategize together. Let think together and you'll see that my two dollars or your two dollars will be more than perform uh, if efficient for what you want to do. Once again, let work together from the beginning to the end. That is the key message. We African Union Commission, we are sharing with you. We have three types of African countries in the space arena. It is the same in the EO arena. You have some countries that are the pioneers. We, let's say in our scale, they are well advanced. South Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, Algeria, and you, you know. And we also have the newcomers. Rwanda Space Agency, Ethiopian Space Agency, Gabon, uh, you know, so on. And the big chunk of the countries are the biggest consumers of the space product and services. Even if they do not have space policy, they do not have space institutions. Let work together. Those who are in front should pull those who are behind. We have some proposals. Those who are interested will get a copy of this presentation at the governance level. Let ask the government and the public service to remove themselves from the execution. This is not the way to create the private sector with the wealth with them. Because it is very sad to see a government body making a call and to see another government body applying for it. They know each other, they are friends, they are getting the contract. The private sector that should survive thanks to the innovation are unable or is unable to get the contract. Let's change the paradigm, let's shift the paradigm. It is possible. The governance should change. Let's move on, please. The private sector and academia, also I'm calling upon my scientists and trainers here, don't wait for public money only to come to you. Let innovate. Let train skills that are in need, either in public sector, in private sector, because you don't train and you go to some of the universities in Africa, and you still find principle of remote sensing, something I learned 30 years ago. Let change the, 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 the let shift a little bit, let innovate, let adapt our curricula. That is important. Private sector, don't wait and run after small, small projects. Let's strategize. Because the private sector, you are surviving, and it is everywhere like that. And you have to innovate. If you propose the same thing the public sector is doing, there is a chance you don't get the contract. Come with innovative solutions. In conclusion, once again, let work on all the segments of air reservation. Those who are telling you that Africa is not ready, don't listen that music to that music. It is another era. It is coming from the, the 21st century, the 22nd century are for Africa. I'm challenging each of you to say that we have to invest in the infrastructure. We also have to invest in the services. In between, we have to invest in the capital, human capital. Again, this is the only way for Africa to find its way with the support from others. They have to accompany us. Please, don't quote me wrong. We need international collaboration. It is a necessity. But we Africans, we have to be in the driver's seat. That is our message to all of us. Let's work 
together for a better uh, future for Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tidian. Um, we will be having a very quick video presentation from the uh, Mrs. MV Pampantonio from the European Commission. But as it loads, uh, just a reminder regarding the hackathon that after lunch, those that are going to the hackathon at the Carnegie Mellon University, we will be having transportation right outside. And the hashtag for those using social media is 2020, at 2022 RC. Um, for the interest of time, we will, uh, we will not be having uh, questions as uh, a lot of people are, are, are looking forward to go to lunch uh, right away. But I believe the panelists have uh, already had quite a deep dive in all the applications. They will still be here in, if anyone is interested to meet with them and have any uh, specific questions to them or their institutions, feel free to reach out to them. We're ready for the video. Dear panelists, dear ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be a part of today's conference on space and geospatial technologies for the Africa we want. As newly appointed director of the Sustainable Resources Directorate of the Joint Research Center, I am very pleased with and supportive of the scope of this conference. As many of you already know, the Joint Research Center mission is to support EU policies with independent evidence throughout the whole policy cycle, from their development to their implementation and monitoring. This role has been accompanied and guided by space data since 1973, when we start using imagery from Landsat 1 to make inventories of agricultural crops and forests. Today, remote sensing at the Joint Research Center is applied in fields such as climate energy, sustainable resources, safety and security, enhancing our capacity to manage the main challenges we face in our landscapes. The Joint Research Center's space-related work has remained focused on expanding applications and remote sensing fundamentals to inform policies and on advancing the new space policy and programs, notably through the European Union's Copernicus program. I am particularly happy to be with you today because we have long-standing experience of working hand-in-hand -hand with African partners in a very successful programs, such as the Global Monitoring for Environment and Security in Africa, GMS in Africa program. This joint program, co-financed and co-implemented by the European Commission and the African Union Commission, is a clear example of how much we can achieve by working together. GMS Africa, which has been deployed in all African countries and over 140 institutions, includes Earth Observation Processing Systems developed by the Joint Research Center, such as the Station, which allows users to easily exploit Earth Observation information to support decision making. The GMS in Africa program shows the added value of collaborative processes and the enormous strengths of learning from each other and adapting existing solutions to new contexts. In this case, adapting Copernicus program data and services to serve African needs. Allow me to mention a few additional examples where horse observation through Copernicus services and Sentinel data has proven to be an extraordinary help in making and implementing policy. For example, in the field of agriculture, Copernicus for GeoGlam responds to the growing calls for improved agricultural information by providing relevant, timely, and accurate data on agricultural production at national, regional, and global scales. In the field of forestry, projects such as Rica Red reinforce national and regional capacities for reporting on mitigation actions in the forest sector, improving the sustainable management of tropical forest resources in the long term, and ultimately Recording in progress. Of local populations. 
the intra-ACP climate service action improves the production of access to and use of climate information services and applications for decision makers, offering them the possibility of developing targeted adaptation options. I would like now to share with you three key messages regarding how space and geospatial technologies can help build the Africa we all want. The first message is about a shared ownership. The European Union's Copernicus program can be tailored to meet the needs for geospatial information and knowledge across Africa regions. It is important that this is done through a co-design process in which our African partners lead both the definition of priorities and design of tailored services. Let me highlight two examples. The Copernicus Global Land Service provides operational products for monitoring the condition of the eco-climate in Eastern Africa. These data are then customized and redistributed to local beneficiaries by the East African Climate Center of Excellence. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, park authorities have used the high-resolution land cover and land cover change data produced by the Copernicus Hotspot Activity to improve their monitoring of protected areas. The second message is about the sustainability of the service. The examples of monitoring climate and protected areas I just provided rely on Copernicus services that have been developed along a strong value chain consisting of policy needs and user requirements, services to meet these needs, and a sustained observance system. It is therefore imperative to transition from generating products on an ad hoc basis through projects to establishing sustained services for different thematic needs. The third message is about a holistic and integrated vision and approach. We see strong potential for integrating course observation datasets across different domains and with other datasets. The success of our common fight against the challenges we face resides in our ability to converge and properly integrate the multitude of sources of information already available. We have an example of such an integrated approach in the Africa Knowledge Platform, a GIS-based platform that collects and combines data and information on the social, economic and environmental situation in Africa to extract additional knowledge for policy making. The Africa Knowledge Platform offers us an additional opportunity to work together to reach a shared understanding about policy needs and priorities, connecting the dots across economic sectors, scientific disciplines, policies, geographic borders, and geographic scales, and promoting sustainable development of Africa, Europe, and the world. I invite you to visit the platform and co-develop it with us. Only by joining forces, as we do here today, we will be able to transform our planet into a more sustainable home for all of us. I conclude now wishing you a very successful event and express the wish to meet all of you physically as soon as possible on the next opportunity. Great, so thanks everyone for... Thank you so much, and a uh, round of applause. All protocols observed. Yeah, we have to start with the parallel oral section 1A and 1B. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, we're supposed to have up to six papers here, but based on what we have at hand, I will yeah, call the ones that are available to come over here so that we will hear what they have for us. The first person we have here, we'll be discussing about remote sensing practice and thought for sustainable development, the case based on the professional master's thesis in geomatic planning and resource management of the University of Ngandore in Cameroon, 
by my girl to show Rana. Please, could the person come out here to have a seat? Satellite image by Bozio E et al. Please, if the group of persons are here, they should come out in front. Another group we have here, we'll be talking about X observation for sustainable urbanization in Africa by Joseph Tushimeri. Please, could you come up here? Without wasting much of your time, I think that is the persons we have here to discuss based on our team, which is remote sensing for natural resource management, as well as geospatial information for smart society development. But meanwhile, before they come to start their work or their presentation, I would like to tell us a little about what we're here for and what their team is all about. Our team on this, we are going to discuss on how products and services of Earth observation system and geo-information technology can be used to solve some pressing issues faced by African continents, as well as to identify opportunities for cooperation, support, and synergies between all stakeholders. Indeed, from this, we also have to learn new skills and get insights for the best practices in the space and your special technologies. Thank you. Please sit down and let's hear from them. Okay. Thank you for the invitation to speak uh, to speak here. Uh, my presentation, as you said, will be focused on five points. As far as the introduction is concerned, we can say that uh, devoting a reflection to remote sensing of development constitutes the last stage of scientific theology whose ambition is to identify the ecological foundation of the practice of the subdiscipline of geography informatics, so-called uh, geomatics. Questions facing the persistent climate and security crisis, how can so called developed remote sensing help state and community in the quest of effective response to the survival and securing ter of territory, the assurance of the management of flow to face the challenge of development? The next question, what about the radar satellite images? Answers to those questions are based on the professional master thesis in geomatics planning and resource management of the University of Ngaoundere in Cameroon from 2011 to 2021. These papers mobilize material from my personal research from the work of master's student in geomatics planning and resource management, as well as from those of colleagues with whom I have often collaborated on this uh, subject. 143 master GPM dissertation were therefore revisited with the aim of evaluating the place of remote sensing in their production. A survey conducted via Google Form made it possible to reconnect with the authors of the master thesis in order to find out what they do in professional life in relation to the use of remote sensing images for sustainable development. Some aspects of the subject are then only referred to for the need of overall consistency because I do not have all the means and skills to deal with them further or because I fear that my addressing them, they 
don't stray too far, too, too far from the main point of my uh, arguments. Remote sensing for sustainable development. We just uh, remind, remote sensing is a technique that allow using a sensor to observe and record the electronic radiation emitted or reflected by any target without direct contact with it. After classification, remote sensing image show us what is happening, where it is happening, and to what extent, and then help us to decide as far as the management, the land planning for development are concerned. These are not based on memory or human experience. They are reliable and allow special references information to be repeated with measurement precision. Which information is digital can, and can be analyzed and compared by computer. Decision can therefore be made quickly and accurately with the geomatic system. Remote sensing for sustainable development. Geomatic is a technical system for land use planning and resource management because it provides a better knowledge for the territory. It computes to the, it contribute to the management of territorial entity to propose scenarios for the development and management of natural and human resources. It also makes it possible to anticipate development prospects by relaying on optimization and consistency of real world uh, data. Remote sensing and GIS talk and practice the case study of GPRM master test. Remote sensing and geographic information system are both producing a tool, a tool for space management and a decision support tool based on geospatial information. They integrate specialized operators that enable the instrumentation of queries, research, and processing of information according to directly geographical criteria. GIS is therefore a privileged tool for integrating geographical information of different nature, structure, and organization based on remote sensing. The Master in Geomatic Planning and Rem uh, Resource Management is the culmination of an open and distant learning project developed from 2006 by the Geomatic Laboratory of the University of Ngawandere in Cameroon. The initiative of this training comes to meet a strong need for professional in geomatics in Central Africa in particular, and therefore to all Africa noted by observation of the scientific manager of this laboratory. Benefiting from the strong interest of and support from the administrative hierarchy of the university, this training was launched in 2010 with the first class of 19 learners. From that time to today, to 2021, 143 students use uh, images and 100 use multispectral ones and 43 the color uh, image download from Google Maps, Google, Google Earth and so on. A close examination of these master thesis based on satellite image revealed that by extension Several sectors related to the territory were uh, concerned under one of the following categories. First, the planning, the development of rural territory, urban planning and development, protection and development of the environment, road network and land transport, agriculture and livestock, mining and logging areas. Radar image are not used at, at all by students as far as soil occupation is concerned. Even though radar remote sensing has the advantage of 
overcoming the constraint of flow cover. This law use could be explained by the fact that their use for Earth observation is less intuitive and expertise is need to interpret images that look much less like a photograph than optical images. Major challenges. The analysis of the GPRM student master thesis revealed that overall decision support for land use planning and resource management is closely linked to geospatial information. While remote sensing represents a new force for land use planning and the management of uh, natural and human resources, its exploitation in Africa is limited by various problems such as the inadequacy of infrastructure, the total dependency of on satellite for Earth observation, and the lack of operational geomatic development policy in many countries. Created in April 2019, the African Geos uh, Special Agency allow researchers to meet and work together as we are doing here. But this agency enables the implementation of a space policy common to all African countries. But we must also consider the creation of a real African geospatial industry with the capacity to design a launcher or to master all the science related to space which will allow Africa to develop its own space resources and thus reducing the acquisition cost for the end users who are here, the student and the researcher in geospatial science. Moreover, the regulatory agencies put on in place to control the environmental information do not have enough expertise and the appropriate equipment and software to make special reference information available for the development. All this is downstream of the improvement of the geopolit geopolitical condition of the country. Concerning the, conclu the conclusion, we can say that at the time when globalization is in full swing, remote sensing for development is arousing more enthusiasm than ever. While it is the subject of research and debate in other continent intellectual cycle, it is still in its fancy in Africa. The objective of this paper was to analyze the contribution of uh, remote sensing for sustainable development in Africa with the GPRM master as an illustration. Low use of some images like radars in master thesis of GPRM is, could be explained by the fact that their use of Earth of observation is less intuitive and expertise in need to interpret images that look much less like a photograph than optical images. In its tenth year of operation, the master, supported by the IUF, I mean, Agence Universitaire de la Francophonie is one of the distant learned masters at the University of Ngaoundé. It's trained nowadays students from a dozen nationalities in Africa and outside the continent. The economic, of human, economic and human development of Africa will necessarily and more easily pass through remote sensing and geographic information systems. Merci. Please, let's give a, a, a very good round of applause for him because he's one of Yeah, thank you, Michael, for your presentation. Yeah, because we have time, I think we have to get a question and answer from each of the presenters before we go into discussion. In no, case you have any questions to ask, time. so that he will be able to answer or any other contribution. Please. 
Any question? Based on what he has told us. Because he was able to discuss about the challenges, talking about remote sensing. If you have other challenges, which you know he did not include in this paper, you can also let us know, as well as also telling us a way forward. You can also give us more contribution on remote sensing, which he did not also mention. Thank you. Bonjour, madame. Je vais poser ma question au français. Je vous laisse le temps aux interprètes de s'adapter. C'est bon Oui, j'ai écouté avec beaucoup d'attention la conférence d'autres collègues camerounais. Elle a donné des statistiques sur l'utilisation des produits satellitaires par la communauté africaine. J'aimerais bien savoir est-ce qu'il y a des statistiques sur l'utilisation des produits spatiaux et les publications euh, scientifiques euh, dans des revues euh, à fort impact euh, facteur. Je m'explique. Est-ce que les produits satellitaires sont utilisés pour l'ingénierie, pour répondre à des questions du quotidien, ou bien pour des études scientifiques un peu plus poussées Parce que ce matin, la collègue de la Commission européenne a parlé des produits Copernicus, qui sont très fiables. Est-ce qu'il y a, par exemple, des statistiques sur des âges de produits Copernicus qui sont des produits euh, à haute résolution et pour les euh, scientifiques. Voilà, merci. Merci pour euh, cette euh, question. En réalité, nous avons euh, exploité les mémoires des étudiants qui ont, que nous avons formé en géomatique, aménagement et gestion des ressources. C'est un master qui fonctionne en, de façon euh, hybride, c'est-à-dire en présentiel et à distance, à l'université de Ngaoundéré. Donc, pour ce qui est, n'est-ce pas, de publication scientifique, euh, il n'y a pas, nous ne nous sommes pas intéressés aux résultats, mais et, et, les étudiants sont encouragés à publier, n'est-ce pas, euh, les résultats, leurs résultats, et certains en ont déjà fait, mais pour l'instant, pour ce qui est, n'est-ce pas, de ce travail, nous n'avons pas euh, regardé cet autre, euh, cet autre aspect. Mais toujours est-il dit que, comme je l'ai dit euh, tout à l'heure, l'utilisation des images radar ne sont n'est pas vraiment euh, euh, fait par ces, ces étudiants, et pourtant, c'est vraiment euh, ce qu'on aurait dû utiliser dans notre dans, surtout dans la partie Afrique tropicale en, en particulier. C'est ce qui nous a d'ailleurs euh, permis d'inviter et de, euh, certaines collègues, notamment euh, Serge Razinov et euh, Rudan, Jean-Paul Rudan, à essayer de faire la promotion de euh, ces euh, images auprès de nos euh, étudiants. Merci. Thank you very much, sir. I hope the person is uh, satisfied with the answer. You know, this is an international conference, and uh, we can speak many languages as we can. So, if there is any other question, we are waiting. Any other question, observation, addition to the challenges, what you think that could be the way forward, also other contributions, talking about remote sensing. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Sias Mostert from South Africa. A question in, um, in the need of, uh, of time series data for academic research. So in other words, covering one season or a number of seasons over the same area. What are the kind of requirements for remote sensing data for time series analysis?
Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sorry. You didn't get your right. Please, can you repeat? Okay, so the paper was around remote sensing, training of remote sensing, and the challenges of remote sensing. Is that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking about the data. Uh, how, what is the need for data that covers a time series? In other words, over 10 years, or 20 years, or 30 years. Is that kind of data accessible? Um, and if not, what, is, what are the outstanding elements? Yes, what we can say is that uh, uh, due to the cost of uh, data, of uh, remote sensing images, uh, many students are not have access to uh, data, to images, at least, at least to free images, Landsat images like that. But those who are to be to be buy, they cannot really get access. In, if unless they are in the project, and the project bought the images to, for for them, but these are not uh, common for many uh, students. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Please, do we have any other question? He is ready to answer. So we are waiting for another one. Thank you. Uh, my name is Evois. Student from Rand Survey, from Ines Rand Survey. I have a question. Uh, you told us that remote testing is there to help us in the planning and management. And my question is that how we achieve sustainable development while we are still having uh, the problems in the development of satellite images. Thank you. We are, we are asking the same question. And what I hear, I hear this morning, especially from uh, Tijan, Watara, let me be confident by saying that, anyway, if we are together, we will achieve, we will, achieve, we will succeed. Because till now, the co because of the cost of the satellite ima images, we cannot we, we do not get access but if we develop an industrial aspect uh, as far as satellite images are concerned i think that the cost the cost will be reduced and the access will be easy for everyone as far as african countries concerned are concerned thank you Before we go to the next presenter, in case you have any question, we are still here to answer that. Any other question? And I'll be talking about other observations for sustainable urbanization in Africa with the case of Kumasi in Ghana. Okay, if I go to the background, uh, you know, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the population is increasing that much, and uh, it has uh, several impacts on the economy, environment, and land use dynamics on the continent. And uh, of course, we need to control urbanization uh, towards uh, the African ones. When we could see some challenges while uh, monitoring urbanization and the planning urbanization at the same time. And uh, if we have uh, more or less accurate data with the time series, we could monitor what happened in the past, currently and try to predict for uh, the future. And if you see the, the population in Africa is uh, fastly growing compared to other continents and 
for Ghana also the population is growing that quickly. If we talk about Kumasi, this is the second uh, largest city in, in, in Ghana and uh, it is like a node for the whole country and people like to be there for easy mobility and it has increased the concentration of the population in the area and uh, of course they have put pressure on other land uses uh, in the country. If you see the images comparing uh, 1986 and 2022 in the area, you could see that uh, settlements are invading other land uses in the area. So, how did you try to monitor that rapid urbanization uh, in Kumasi? Uh, first of all, we used data left provided by Digital Earth Africa and uh, how the D Africa access to the data sets. Uh, those data were sentinel to imageries that D Africa had already processed, uh, going through all steps uh, from cloud masking, geometric and radiometric collections, and trying to make a mosaic covering the whole uh, uh, continent, what you call annual geomat. And we have with those uh, annual geomats, and which are cloud free and so on, to compare uh, the two uh, times, that was 2017 and 2020, a period of more or less uh, four years in Ghana. So we Perfect. took those uh, 27, 2020, because we have data that we say after 2016. And uh, if we try to compare the distribution of uh, Umasi City, we could see on the left in 2017 and on the right uh, in 2020 that there was uh, more or less a, a huge expansion of the city. But uh, until we see some uh, statistics, uh, if we put easy graphs, that way people to compare uh, statistically, we could see uh, that uh, Kumasi city expanded uh, uh, from 445.7 square kilometer to 616 uh, and above uh, square kilometer. It's like uh, an increase of uh, 38%. Uh, percent. And uh, if you consider that between 2017 and 2020, we had more or less four years, that should be an increase of more or less around 10% uh, or over uh, an annual increase of around 10%. Uh, and that should be uh, the highest increase uh, in the last decade. And this increase would always, would always be the case unless some uh, measures are taken. But someone could uh, ask uh, what are the areas that underwent uh, uh, urban expansion, which were areas that were urban before and were not affected, and also uh, what are areas which could say urban crime more or less related to some errors or related to people to some other land users that should have the same fitness as urban. And we could see, we could detect the change uh, of uh, some land use converted to what? And you could see, uh, because uh, the city is located in the center of the country, serving as a lot, so people uh, prefer to stay there and to expand the city uh, there are several lands that were threatened, especially agricultural lands and 
and also some green lands, because even here in Ichigai, the case, people prefer to, to expand the city to uh, those uh, uh, natural lands and green lands. That should also have uh, an adverse impact, like uh, uh, affecting food security in the area, but also the environmental issues uh, in the area. And uh, uh, to conclude, uh, those annual geomads were already processed, uh, available on the Africa platforms, and through them, we were able to monitor uh, the, the spatial temporal evolution uh, of um, the Massey City, showing an increase of about 38% over uh, four years, up to 2017 and 2020. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the expansion means the population is increasing too, and uh, there are needs not only for settlements but also for other infrastructure. They need to build roads, they need to build uh, hospitals, schools, uh, centers, and so on. And uh, of course, with related impacts uh, on uh, other land use and land covers, but also some adverse uh, environmental uh, impacts. And uh, although uh, this study uh, it is still primarily in the explore uh, what are the real or the electronic impact of disurbanization on other uh, uh, other priorities in terms of planning like environmental impact if agricultural land were converted or to be impacted on food security, if the, the state is funding, what should be the, its impact on environmental pollution and, and so on. And that's why we suggest this was observed from the board, but we to combine uh, with the uh, in situ data sets uh, to understand in a holistic way uh, the impact of this expression of the city of Kumasi. I think that this was part of my team. Uh, I mentioned three based in Africa, but also uh, the others behind the scene who have been working on the product development, producing the geomat units, but also providing feedback on how to validate or to calibrate uh, uh, those for the produced geomads and some related algorithms. Thank you. Please let us give him another round of applause. Thank you very much, Joseph. For that, your presentation on Earth Observation for Sustainable Urbanization in Africa. Having heard what he has said, we would like to ask him some questions. So the floor is free. Ask him any question. Merci beaucoup, Madame la modératrice. En fait, je n'ai pas de questions, j'essaie de, de comprendre. J'ai bien aimé la présentation. Et, alors, j'ai vu que notre collègue utilise des images sans tunnel qui sont accessibles de Global Earth Observation. J'ai vu qu'il y a des résultats sur l'extension de la ville et l'impact sur les impacts négatifs sur l'environnement et tout ça. Mais, Je n'ai pas compris quel type de traitement a été fait. Est-ce qu'il s'agit d'images brunes ou d'images traitées Si c'est des images traitées, quel est le taux d'incertitude Parce que moi, quand j'ai vu les tâches, les tâches rouges, il y a des tâches qui sont plus grosses que d'autres, j'imagine qu'il y a 
Est-ce qu'il y a un software qui, tout fait, qui fait des analyses ou bien est-ce qu'il y a de l'intelligence humaine qui est là-dedans et qui est sujette à une erreur Si cette erreur existe, il va falloir la quantifier. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup pour votre question, pour votre intervention. Euh, D'abord, euh, je fais partie de l'équipe qui travaille ici sur le développement de ces images, sur le traitement. Je n'ai pas voulu aller à travers des technicités d'analyse de base de terre. L'idée en était que, euh, dit Alpha Africa, chaque fois que le satellite sentinelle livre une image, tous les six jours, tous les, tous les six jours euh, nous avons développé l'algorithme qui télécharge immédiatement et ces images, mmh. euh, qui fait euh, le masquage euh, des nuages et qui essaie de faire un mosaïque sur tout le continent africain en combinant euh, ce qu'on appelle des, des moyennes euh, de chaque pixel pour les zones qui ont été couvertes de, 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 de nuages. Et par après, ce, euh, ce géomane annuel, qui peut être annuel, mensuel, ou même trimestriel ou semestriel, est hébergé sur notre espace en ligne, euh, à Cape Town, sur l'Amazon Web Service. Et de là, et on peut accéder à ces images et faire une analyse directe. Euh, alors, pour, pour moi, de mon côté, je n'avais pas voulu aller à travers ces, ces analyses, mais ces géomates ont été validés. Ça a été validé et la précision en allait au-delà de, de 90%. Le marge de l'heure, quant aux, aux algorithmes de, à utiliser pour la civilisation de l'urbanisation, ça a été validé aussi. Le cas de, de Kumasi, ça a été un cas de validation. Et le cas de Bourou, en Ouganda, ça a été euh, un cas de validation. Partout là, on était allé au-delà de... Euh, au Bourou, je pense, c'était 91%. Et Kumasi, c'était peut-être 81%. Alors, c'est scientifiquement admissible. Et bien sûr, ce que nous faisons ici, cette modélisation, ce n'est pas tout à fait une réalité. Mais vu le prix investi, on peut, dire, on peut se féliciter là où nous en sommes. Et ce sont toujours des, des données qu'on est en train toujours d'améliorer. On améliore à la fois la façon dont nous traitons les données à travers les algorithmes, mais aussi les indices à utiliser, l'indice d'ébénisation qu'on avait utilisé, euh, on s'améliore toujours. L'idée était d'avoir 100%. Mais en science, je ne peux pas garantir ça. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon, Joseph. Thank you for that presentation. I am Basan Danonjaz from South Africa. Um, can you please tell me how do the results of this research Um, help the continent to have sustainable urbanization. And uh, I think I missed the, the part where you spoke about how you trained your model and all of that so that you can be able to threshold urbanization. Um, so maybe if you can touch on that when you you um, answering what is your definition of urbanization? Um, is it built up skyscrapers or, or as long as uh, natural vegetation has been removed, then that was defined as urbanization? Thank you. Oh, the difficult one. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, uh, what we call urbanization is not removing uh, green areas, it's making an inclusive area which is viable, which doesn't harm the life for anybody. So, um, and it's also able to supply food to, to sustain food security to the population. So removing uh, or cleaning new spaces or even uh, eliminating uh, 
peripheral agricultural lands is not uh, good for uh, sustainable urbanization as long as it concerns. So this is um, this is how I understand urbanization. Although uh, this is an open discussion, and I think could be the contribution. So you ask us um, me how how did we how do we see why how do we think how far do we think our data set or our results uh, could contribute to sustainable urbanization in Africa. Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, very simple. If we see uh, some uh, green areas uh, being uh, converted into settlements, uh, cities are uh, expanding towards peripheral areas, it's like we are informing our planners that uh, pay attention. We don't know, we don't know until we are this city is big expanding, maybe you should adopt uh, some other ways of building. Maybe go up instead of expanding in space. So this is, this is the, the policy. Uh, people are living in, uh, in the lo long buildings and uh, leave more space for food production and uh, also, um, some of these spaces that could provide a clean area uh, to the population. Even in some areas, there could be a source of energy, although it is no longer encouraged. But so, this is all to understand. Our, our, at our level, it's a kind of alarming. The city has expanded uh, 30, above 38% in four years. Imagine after 50 years or when we reach 2063, the African ones, that should be expanded by uh, a thousand times. And that's a sustainable way of doing things. And uh, yeah, we, we don't have a control in the decision making. So it's a kind of alarm to the decision makers. And the good thing for this model, it's applicable to all areas. It can be duplicated. That we done in Ghana, it can be done in Rwanda, doing something called secondary cities monitoring. It could be done in Kenya or South Africa and this area. So it's, it's a kind of arming for, for uh, evidence-based planning to make sure that what you do is sustainable. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Abdul Aziz. I am uh, from Somalia. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was amazing. Uh, mine is a very quick question. I just want to know if uh, the city, Kumasi city, has benefited from the study. Uh, the land authorities, the, uh, have they uh, welcomed the, the, the study? Have they uh, make it a uh, basis for their decision making? Uh, if yes, uh, the decree, uh, the urbanization has it decreased since then? It was 2020, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and if not, uh, what are the challenges? Because we, we want to, to, uh, to, to learn not only from the, to, uh, the, the remote sensing tools, but also from the management side. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um this study was initiated by one of our staff, Edward Baoma, uh, who is based in Accra, Ghana. And the uh, Africa has a very close collaboration with the uh, Ghana Statistics. And uh, among the areas of collaborations, also urban monitoring is included. And also, I have a uh, agricultural university of Accra, I don't know if I spelled very well. Also, uh, in such institution, the idea to see um, the uh, Department of Environment also could contribute to monitoring the uh, expansion or how um, uh, green, green areas, even agricultural areas, are affected by several development activities. So, uh, since we did this, um, First, there was a capacity building, 
uh, we, by our colleague, um, our colleague Edward Baoma, based in Ghana, with the uh, Ghana statistics, and also the University of Agriculture and the, I don't know, Environment, I should check. And the idea was, first of all, I want to say, we are seeing things, how they are going, we developed a tool uh, that might be useful, and uh, telling you that a decision was made, uh, that I'm not sure, but at least I know that all decisions that are being made or taken in our countries, we are bringing a small or contribution. Maybe someone understands, oh, this makes sense. When they are in the cabinet meeting, guys, we are not here there. Maybe our conditions to be small, but there, but they need to, to keep pushing, improving what we do, and raise the awareness. So th th that's, that's, that's our target. But the time the decision will be taken, or if it has been taken, uh, I'm not sure about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Joseph, for your presentation. Uh, I think you have shown the case of Ghana, but you have introduced shown that uh, there is a problem of population growth. Uh, the, that is general in Africa. And when you look at the population growth, that one, of course, is going to affect the land use, because the land use uh, is going to decrease in special arable land where we get food, and uh, of course it affects food security, and where there is a problem of food security, there is a hunger, also the hunger comes in. And if hunger comes in, there's also a high mortality rate. Also, which is going to affect the life expectancy of the population. My uh, question is, I've seen that you have worked with the Ghana, uh, have you now proposed some strategy or policies so that you can now be able to work on these whole issues involved in this uh, earth observation and sustainable development? Thank you very much. Sorry, my name is Samuel uh, from Rwanda, working with the Indian Society. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Samuel. Uh, uh, I agree with you that uh, uh, the world is a system, uh, all problems are interconnected. So whatever we do affects another in one way or another. So that's why population growth could affect several uh, um, parts of this system. And uh, uh, you asked uh, if we had proposed some solutions um, to identify the uh, problem. Uh, here I should uh, first of all, I'll go back to the law of the Africa. For this of Africa, our law is not uh, to analyze the data immediately and provide detailed reports informing the people. Our law is to, to easily for people in data accessibility and processing and uh, empower them and make sure that they are never stuck while in analyzing data. So that's why we collaborate with the Ghana Statistics and we have what you call uh, IPs, implementing partners, and some stakeholders. And if they want to analyze data towards a given problem, we could develop use cases and then after we can contribute to data interpretation and uh, maybe that's where should we should come to proposing solutions. So at this, we are doing this with the uh, Ghana Statistics and the, the local university. Um, it is a report or a use case in the pipeline and we think uh, the solutions will be proposed after because the one we identified, which I'm not in the position to communicate, is that Instead of expanding the city toward the peripheral areas, why could not build longer or higher towers that could uh, host several people and leave space uh, for 
clean environment or green, green areas in the city and also leave the prefer to agriculture. And we think if we go and analyze other impacts on uh, environmental pollution, water pollution and so on, the holistic study as talking about in the conclusion that should bring a, a specific uh, solutions to each problem. So that's until now we did it as the Africa we didn't provide any great solution, but we know through our partner, the, university, the local university in Ghana statistics, we are working on this sustainable urbanization and uh, mining things to to propose some solutions. So directly not, but indirectly Ghana statistics would inform uh, the population of Ghana. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. I am uh, Aman from Cote d'Ivoire. My question is very simple. Why this city, Kumasi city, uh, is so attractive during this last five years? Do you compare what's happening from I know, Accra and Kumasi? What makes this town so attractive? And uh, the second question is uh, about uh, the infrastructure of this uh, the city. What about this uh, infrastructure? That is very complicated. First of all, uh, I have been in the, in the Accra once and in the Kumasi for a few hours. So, uh, so in the terms of uh, infrastructure, how it, they have been growing between uh, 2017 and 2020, I'm not in a good position to answer. And uh, why Kumasi is expanding so fast? It's a node. You know, Accra by the ocean, uh, Kumasi, the center is not with the link supplying uh, food and everything to the whole country. Uh, from the literature I read, that should be the main cause that people would have to stay in the center, that they could move freely to all corners of the country, do their businesses, and even if farmers staying in Kumasi could export their goods, their production very easily and get um, agricultural input uh, very easily. So it's a good area for business, uh, farming, uh, and uh, also uh, import importation and exportation of what people uh, produce. So this is what, from what I read from the literature. I, I don't know, maybe as you are closer to the area, you could have an idea on why people like to move to Kumasi, or even someone in Ghana here in the room to share the experience, but that's what I need from the teacher. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Joseph, me too, I have a question. Maybe uh, I missed something because I had some technical issues. Uh, it, my question is about the methodology. Uh, I saw maybe the last result to kind of uh, change detection map. Uh, did you perform maybe uh, thresholding based on indexes or was it, about, was it from, or was it classification based? Normal classification based, maybe supervised or unsupervised? Uh, thanks, Mubuni. And I know that you know even in Accra better, so uh, uh, much better. So uh, the thing is, um, the the we are based on the urbanization uh, in index uh, that that we did threshold based on the urbanization index. That was not based on uh, uh, any uh, uh, classic uh, image classification. Thank you. Okay, Marci. Uh One more question. Maybe it's somehow funny, but also useful. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, uh, at 
Digital of Africa were developing some uh, uh, ready-made uh, algorithm, if I can say. Uh, like for people, you know, if uh, you have some those kind of ready-made algorithms, people come and click next and next and put images without uh, uh, having background of what they, they are doing. Are you sure that you are not promoting business? <laughs> Great. And this, this one professor from the University of Nairobi uh, told me a few minutes ago at our booth that we are a kind of promoting business to students. And, and uh, for me, uh, I said uh, we are there uh, for several users, and for each user, I've defined what he or she might need. For example, uh, what we do, all algorithms um, are from downloading images from sensitive images, crowd masking, geometric and geometric correction, and the producing geomats are available. And for the students, as we are using uh, Python um, uh, coding, for a student or someone younger who would like to go through and enhance the programming skills, he could even change or add more indices depending upon the what he or she needs. So that's an advantage for younger younger generation. And uh, the idea behind also is we also provide the capacity building, uh, some courses from basics of Python coding for image analysis. Uh, until uh, the use of our uh, data sets. So we, uh, for, through that, I think we are promoting, uh, we are introducing our young generation who would like to use some black box softwares, clicking next, next in the QGIS or other related uh, interface and get them the desired set. I did a, a maximum liquid classification, but he or she doesn't know what was behind as you see in the classical tutorials. So I think we are contributing uh, better. But also, it's to solve, I don't think someone like the VIPs that were sitting in the morning would have to have all those steps. They would have to have a map with the accuracy of the map and some related statistics. And then they need something to inform the decision. So. We are serving both people at school or young professionals, but also should make sure that we continue to inform a decision on the continent. So when we don't promote laziness, we are helping people to work, to change the way things were getting done in the past and go to direct uh, coding that through which you can specify what you need and customize uh, what is available. Thank you. Thank you very much, presenters, for giving us answers to the questions. Now, let us, uh, because we are here to exchange knowledge, learn new skills, as well as get insights from the brightest mind in the tech world, and as well as share lessons learned. Talk about best practices in the space and geospatial technologies. Now, we have to open the floor in case you have other relevant information you could share with us based on remote sensing for natural resource management, as well as geospatial information for smart city development. You could also go as well as telling us uh, issues like uh, space policy, programs, projects, peculiar in your country. Because uh, I know we have uh, more than 40 countries in attendance for this conference. So it is open for discussion for other information you should, you could give to us as a kind of contribution. Thank you very much.
fait, euh, j'ai une question et une suggestion, voire même une, une remarque. Euh, D'abord, je vais donner le point de vue d'un océanographe. Et donc, euh, c'est plutôt l'observation marine qui m'intéresse plus que l'observation terrestre, qui est ô combien aussi intéressante. Euh, L'idée, c'est maintenant, d'un point de vue océanographique, les observations, ça coûte de plus en plus cher et on essaie d'optimiser les moyens et surtout. Et donc, comme, comment on les optimise On utilise des bateaux d'opportunité, on utilise des gliders, mais on essaie d'exploiter au maximum les données satellitaires, tous paramètres confondus. Et quand je dis tous paramètres confondus, la température, la salinité, effectivement, la hauteur, la hauteur des vagues, l'altimétrie, j'en passe. Et euh, ces données satellitaires qui sont de plus en plus disponibles permettent aux pays africains, pour ce qui est le contexte, d'optimiser leurs moyens d'observation et surtout qui ne sont pas euh, très, très fournis pour le moment. Et j'ai vu qu'il y a, nous sommes à la 13e conférence de la AC et j'ai vu ce matin notre collègue qui a parlé de Copernicus, j'ai dit qu'il y a des expertises et j'aimerais bien savoir comment on peut, peut-être pas, pas aujourd'hui, à la prochaine session de la AC, essayer d'avoir des indicateurs sur l'impact de l'utilisation du produit satellitaire, non seulement sur l'impact social et économique, mais l'impact sur l'orientation de la recherche scientifique marine, j'insiste moi, vers d'ici, où les connaissances sont à prendre et où l'impact social est aussi important. Pour ne rien vous cacher, les problèmes auxquels je pense, la raréfaction des ressources marines, je pense aux poissons, l'érosion côtière, l'élévation accélérée du niveau de la mer, tout ça ce sont des sujets qui sont abordables préalablement par des produits satellitaires. Alors je ne comprends pas pourquoi on ne met pas un peu plus le paquet là-dessus, alors que j'ai pu comprendre qu'il y a des moyens, il y a l'expertise. Merci. Please, can we give him a clap? Please, let me do a video. Any other person we need contribution? Before we call back on our presenters to give us another discussion they could have or share with us, having not gone on the research. Okay? Thank you very much. My name is Justin Arzo. I'm from Benin. But I, I will not be speaking on behalf of Benin because uh, I do not represent Benin here. I'm from UNESCO and I work for the Intergovernment Administrative Commission. First, to comment what my colleague uh, Sherry Samari from Tunisia have said. I would like to stress that, uh, as we all know, the ocean covers about 70% of our planet. And rather than saying the planet Earth, we better call it planet ocean. And it is also known that uh, when we speak about uh, climate change, there is no way you can understand the climate of the Earth if you do not take into consideration the ocean component in terms of ocean circulation, in terms of heat exchange between atmosphere and ocean, and that is from the physical point of view, from socio-economic point of view, in the maritime transportation, 90% of uh, the transportation go to Ocean. So my, so my point here is, ocean are vital for Africa, not only for the coastal country, even for mangrove country. You know, if you take uh, in the mangrove country, like Niger, for example, in West Africa, the economy depends, and also the transportation of the goods depends on the status of the ports on the neighbor country and so forth. Again, the question I want to raise here is how even in those that new country, the 
competitive advantage of space science for monitoring climate change and for those countries that are coastal countries in Africa, how far they do take advantage of space science for coastal and marine environments. From tomorrow, there will be a joint workshop between GMS and Africa and Global Ocean Observing System of Africa that UNESCO sponsored for the last 20 years. We would like to invite anybody who is interested to understand the interaction between ocean, land, and atmosphere to join that meeting, which is in the neighborhood here from tomorrow to Thursday. Again, I want to insist that uh, there is a global strategy and initiative today, which is called the UN Decade, the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And my colleague here, Mikao Dido, who is based at the UNESCO office in Nairobi, is the technical secretary to ensure African contribution to that global initiative, which is the United Nations of ocean science. The key word here is ocean and science. Because as the chairman of the African Academy of Science have said, if science alone cannot save Africa, if science alone cannot save Africa, Africa cannot be saved from science. If science alone cannot save Africa, Africa cannot be saved from science. So here we are making a pledge for you, Director of the Institute, advisor to the Minister, Senior Manager, make a pledge with your government that investment in science, in the youth, in ocean observation, in earth observation are exciting and in the same way it contributes also to social economic development of the country. Let's give them a round of applause. Any other questions? Please. Oui, je vous présente Karim Hilmi. Je suis de l'Institut national de recherche analytique au Maroc. Et je voudrais apporter quand même un un témoignage concernant le grand apport de la, des produits de la télétechnie spatiale, notamment euh, au niveau de la recherche halutique nationale et bien entendu régionale. Euh, comme ça a été dit et mentionné par mes collègues Sherif euh, euh, Justin, effectivement, il euh, euh, y a beaucoup d'investissements euh, dans l'observation in situ. Ça coûte très cher. Euh, de faire sortir un bateau, d'aller collecter l'information. Elle est très importante comme information. Sauf que, euh, avec l'expérience et pour le suivi des stocks à l'UTIC, euh, nous nous sommes rendus compte avec le temps que le produit euh, satellital est d'une grande importance, notamment l'imagerie satellitale. Ça permet quand même de donner l'information dans l'espace et dans le temps, alors que le bateau, quand il sort pour prospecter une zone particulière, il prospecte une zone, mais euh, par exemple, je parle du cas euh, de la pouline de la côte ouest euh, du courant des Canaries, donc c'est un événement euh, qui, qui change dans le temps et dans l'espace, et donc c'est un peu difficile de le suivre euh, d'une manière euh, par navire de recherche. On peut avoir l'information sur une zone particulière, mais on ne peut pas avoir l'information d'un point de vue euh, spatial. D'où l'intérêt de l'utilisation des produits euh, satellites, notamment maintenant avec la nouvelle technologie, de, il y a de nouveaux produits qui permettent justement de, de donner ce type d'informations. Toujours est-il qu'il faut euh, un traitement derrière et donc euh, ça permet de donner euh, l'information euh, en continu euh, sur le processus et, et bien sûr d'apporter euh, l'information nécessaire pour euh, le, le, euh, la prise de décision et pour le décideur. Donc voilà, je vous remercie.
apporter mon point de vue. Euh, la question que je voudrais poser est celle de savoir est-ce que nous pouvons véritablement avoir une industrie géospatiale en Afrique Est-ce que nous pouvons l'avoir Ceci parce que nous avons besoin des images. Même celles qui sont mises à notre disposition, je parle par exemple des images sentinelles, le téléchargement est un problème, déjà. Et ensuite, quand bien même l'étudiant dispose des images, la compétence nécessaire et les outils pour le traitement, c'est un autre problème. J'ai fait une expérience euh, le mois dernier, c'est-à-dire en septembre, du 19 au 23 septembre. Nous avons organisé un, un colloque, une conférence internationale, pour euh, célébrer les 10 ans de ce master euh, Gagère. J'ai invité, j'ai sollicité et obtenu de deux collègues euh, français, euh, Jean-Paul Rudan et Serge, de faire la vulgarisation de l'utilisation de ces images, de ces données satellitales auprès de nos étudiants, auprès de tous participants étudiants qui se seraient inscrits sur le site, n'est-ce pas, de la conférence. Ça a été très bien fait. Trop bien même, je le dirais. Malheureusement, je reçois chaque jour des, des questions auxquelles je ne peux même pas apporter de réponse parce que j'ai un ordinateur euh, Core 2. Je ne peux pas télécharger, je ne peux pas faire le traitement de, des images. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut qu'on fasse bon, Vous voyez, là, je n'ai pas de solution. Est-ce que nous ne pouvons pas envisager donc une véritable industrie, je dirais bien industrie, parce que quand nous parlons de l'industrie, il s'agit d'un ensemble qui constitue, qui, qui, qui porte à la fois sur le produit, sur ceux qui produisent et sur ceux qui utilisent, the end users, c'est-à-dire les utilisateurs finaux. Et ce que nous avons vu ce matin, euh, après, dans la, après, après, à la suite de la présentation de, de Tijan, ça nous donne, ça nous donne de l'espoir. Mais c'est un espoir qui serait peut-être pour à long terme. Or, le besoin se fait pressant. Comment est-ce que nous pouvons développer hein, cette industrie géospatiale qui va permettre vraiment de mettre l'image satellitaire. Nous sommes tous désormais convaincus que l'image satellitaire est, peut être à la base du développement parce qu'il permettra ou bien il permet de produire ce qu'on appelle les outils d'aide à la décision, tant pour l'aménagement du territoire que pour la gestion des ressources. Mais si for assessment to see how is um, the use of Earth observation contributing uh, to the well-being of African people. And uh, that's, that's also something to look at. We tried with the Africa, there was kind of socio-economic study showing, done by Pakistan experts showing what amount of money could be saved through the use of EO data sets and the technologies and uh, it was a huge amount of money though I don't remember the exact figures in terms of food security, uh, cost erosion control and, and, and so on, that's a great thing. Uh, secondly, we have uh, data providers, uh, several uh, initiatives providing data, the data from Sentinel, some are uh, talking about Transat uh, and so on. And we have intermediate people, being NGOs or academia, processing them. But uh, the coordination of all those initiatives should be uh, something to look at because um, uh, there should be some duplicate or some complementarity, but several people. Uh, 
not we are uh, about. Lastly, we need also awareness raising. People could think remote sensing, other observation, it's something very complicated. I don't want to uh, bring a headache to me dealing with them, so it should be a lot of awareness raising to let people know that even if pre-processed -pre data are there, a simple professional organization could use them rather than hiring uh, consultants and paying a, a lot of money. We could empower one or two or three professionals in the institution and they could start uh, doing uh, the job themselves. So capacity building and awareness raising should be something uh, very needed. So, uh, and of course, I do thank everybody here and uh, wish to see you in the next <laughs> conference. Thank you. Moi, je vais parler en français. Je suis Majigoto Robert Duchard et à la suite du prof Michel qui parlait de l'industrie géospatiale. Moi, je, je vais parler en tant qu'utilisateur des images. Le besoin d'utilisation d'images s'est euh, porté dans le domaine de la statistique où en ce moment, dans le cadre du, du recensement du cycle 2020 des Nations Unies, il était demandé que les, la cartographie soit faite à base d'images à haute résolution au niveau centimètre près. Et là, nous nous sommes en train de préparer au troisième recensement du Tchad et il était difficile de trouver les images qui puissent répondre à nos besoins. Le moment est indiqué pour que ce cri soit lancé pour qu'on puisse peut-être avoir des réponses pour ces activités. Le besoin d'image est réel. Merci. Je vous remercie. Je remercie aussi les deux présentateurs. Et en particulier la question du premier présentateur qui a demandé si, si l'Afrique peut avoir une industrie spatiale et que les, que les problèmes c'est maintenant. Moi je pense que, et ça c'est d'après Jules Verne, qui dit que tout ce qu'un homme pense, il y aura toujours un autre un jour pour le réaliser. Et aujourd'hui, on n'a plus besoin de convaincre personne que la science est indispensable pour le développement ou même pour la vie simple. Et on n'a même plus besoin non plus de convaincre qui que ce soit pour montrer que les données spatiales sont importantes, même en termes de sécurité des nations, en termes de sécurité du territoire, la surveillance des frontières, la pollution, les feux de brousse. Donc c'est des choses que le gouvernement connaisse. Donc, il est possible pour l'Afrique je ne dis pas pour chaque pays africain, je ne dis pas pour chaque, chacun des 54 pays africains, je dis pour l'Afrique, il est possible et même plus facile de créer une industrie spatiale de la même façon que l'Europe l'a fait. Chaque pays européen a son industrie spatiale, mais à une taille, à une taille limitée. Mais l'Union européenne s'est rendue compte que pour faire partie de la compétition internationale et surtout être souveraine, sur cette donnée, il leur fallait créer une industrie spatiale européenne. Ils ont créé l'ESA, Agence spatiale européenne. Ils ont créé le MESAT, European Meteorological Satellite Association. Okay? Et donc, et là, à cette réunion, même si GMS Africa sponsorise une partie, c'est quand même la conférence de l'association africaine de protection pour l'environnement. Une association dont à l'origine, c'est deux scientifiques africains qui ont l'idée de la créer. Pourquoi je mets l'accent sur deux scientifiques africains qui ont l'idée de la créer Pour montrer le rôle des individus, le rôle des citoyens. Parce que avant de dire que nos gouvernements ne font pas ceci, ne font pas cela, qu'est-ce que chacun de nous, en tant que citoyens, nous faisons pour faire bouger la ligne dans nos petits domaines 
ces deux scientifiques africains, M. Sissé Oldaï, qui a la réunion là, ici, il n'est pas peut-être dans la salle, et pour ceux qui étaient à l'Union du Nigeria, qui se sont retrouvés à Colorado il y a plus de 30 ans, où chaque sous-région qui était là, l'Asie, l'Amérique latine, l'Europe, l'Amérique, était dans la salle, et pendant les pauses, les régions se réunissaient. Et ils se sont rendus compte que l'Afrique n'avait pas d'association régionale. Ils ont décidé ils ont de le faire. Et bon là, maintenant, tous tout les deux ans, avec des moyens limités, il faut cette conférence qui permet de prendre conscience. Donc ce que je veux dire par là, dans la réunion, il y a des directeurs de cabinet. Ce matin, il y avait des ministres. Demain, il y a des ministres. C'est que quand vous partez de cette réunion-là, quand vous finissez cette réunion, soyez des ambassadeurs auprès de vos gouvernements. Pour pousser, pour pousser, pour pousser, pour pousser, jusqu'à ce que l'Union africaine décide de créer une industrie. Pourquoi l'Europe a créé James D'abord, James qui est devenu Copernicus et soutenu James Africa. Parce que ce projet permet de nourrir l'industrie spatiale européenne avec les données sentinelles, avec les données de Ambisat. Donc, si la besoin existe et si on crée des structures pour le faire, ça va générer encore une économie à grande échelle. Donc ce que je vais dire par là, la plupart de ceux d'entre vous qui êtes ici, vous êtes tous des directeurs, utilisez vos positions pour intervenir auprès de vos cabinets de ministres pour que quand ils vont au réunion de l'Union africaine, ils insistent pour que la création d'industries panafricaines spatiales devienne une priorité de l'Union africaine. Si le décide, ils peuvent le faire de la même façon qu'ils ont créé des universités panafricaines, ils peuvent faire autre. Ce ne sera pas facile, on n'a pas toutes les ressources, mais c'est possible. Dernier point pour finir, chaque pays a des limites. Mais pour moi, en Afrique, il y a trois pays qui ont des supercomputers. L'Afrique du Sud, à Stenibosch, a le premier supercomputer avec l'Égypte de IBM, mais qui l'utilise. Même certains de mes collègues sud-africains ne savent même pas que ça existe. Nous étions en réunion. Le James Africa en 2019 en Côte d'Ivoire, l'Université de Côte d'Ivoire dispose de supercomputers. Même certains étudiants ivoiriens ne le savent Parce que je vais dire par là, c'est quoi Essayons de connaître d'abord les facilités qui existent. Même si ça n'existe pas dans tous les pays, ceux dont les pays ne disposent pas de ces supercalculateurs, de ces supercalculateurs peuvent nouer des partenariats pour utiliser la facilité d'autres pays. Parce qu'il n'arriverait jamais au moment où chaque pays aura tout. Donc ce que je dis par là, c'est qu'en Afrique, il faudrait que nous apprenions à mutualiser nos capacités, à mettre en réseau les infrastructures qui existent. Donc je voulais attirer votre attention, surtout pour les chercheurs, savoir ce que les pays voisins ont et que vous n'avez pas. Et ne cherchez pas forcément à forcer le gouvernement à créer les mêmes choses dans vos pays. Il faut fédérer les ressources. Le Kenya a des facilités que peut-être la Tanzanie n'a pas. C'est des pays limitrophes. On peut créer des programmes conjoints. La Côte d'Ivoire, les supercalculateurs, le Togo n'a pas. Et nous, à l'UNESCO, on a financé des étudiants togolais qui voulaient aller en France. On leur a dit non, vous coûterez, vous coûterez moins cher. Allez en Côte d'Ivoire au curate. Ils ont pas une formation brillante. Ils sont tous les deux présidents aujourd'hui. Tous les deux sont professeurs aujourd'hui. Il y a même une qui est professeur au Canada. Pour dire que l'Afrique a des infrastructures de base pour former des gens. Dans chaque pays africain, il y a des universités. Mutualiser les ressources, encourager les jeunes à aller dans les pays voisins, ça empêche l'immigration, je dirais, meurtrière à travers la Méditerranée. Ça pisse nos étudiants sur place et on mutualise les ressources et ça donne de l'espoir à la jeunesse. Donc je veux insister sur le fait que nous n'avons pas tout forcément en Afrique. Mais il y a des pays qui ont plus que d'autres. Travaillons ensemble pour utiliser déjà les ressources qui existent en Afrique. Les universités, les infrastructures, les centres de recherche, avec la mobilité entre Afrique. Ce qui n'empêche pas d'aller aux États-Unis, ça n'empêche pas d'aller en France, ça n'empêche pas d'aller en Angleterre, ni au Portugal, ni en Australie. Mais commençons par utiliser nos propres ressources et savoir ce qui existe. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Non, mais je n'allais pas prendre la parole, mais Justin m'a donné une idée sur les compétences. Le premier présentateur a parlé de mon industrie géospatiale 
et trois minutes plus tard, il a parlé d'un corps d'eux. Donc, ce n'est pas, pas tout à fait compatible. Moi, je ne sais pas ce que veut dire le mot « industrie géospatiale ». Ce que je sais, c'est que les produits satellitaires sont disponibles et diversifiés. Il y a l'Europe, il y a la Chine, il y a la Russie, il y a l'Inde, il y a la Corée du Sud. Donc, il y a une diversification des produits satellitaires. Ce qui manque, c'est qu'il faut utiliser le moyen, c'est un niveau d'expertise assez élevé. Donc, de l'expertise de très haut niveau. Et certes, dans les pays, le Maroc, le Nigeria, l'Algérie, le Ghana, le Kenya, et j'en passe, il y a des compétences au niveau national. Peut-être qu'il va falloir penser à la création d'un centre africain d'excellence en direction, et un centre pour les meilleurs, les tops des tops, ce sont c'est à force d'utiliser finement les produits satellitaires qu'on va découvrir des choses et qu'on va s'orienter vers la, la création de nouveaux besoins. Ce sont les nouveaux besoins qui vont nous positionner. Mais pour le moment, sachez que les produits satellitaires sont disponibles, diversifiés et toutes les résolutions, toutes les résolutions sont accessibles, moyennant des accords multilatéraux, bilatéraux, que sais-je encore. Merci. Thank you very much, sir, for your contribution. Any other contribution? Uh, just out there, if you can uh, be keen a bit, you can hear some entertainment. People are preparing at least to go and uh, host us for the next session. I believe this session now concludes our first uh, session of the day. So for that, I just want to appreciate uh, your participation in uh, various uh, ways. I hope I've not knocked out anybody. Um, this session started uh, in good time, so and uh, we didn't have uh, attendance by two other uh, presentations, so that's why we've uh, tried to at least finish on uh, on time. So we have 15 more minutes to go. Um, uh, so we have other sessions again, which started a bit late. Um, I believe our rapporteurs are putting together, um, you know, a, an overview of uh, what we're going through today, and then uh, tomorrow, in the interest of everybody, we'll have a summary of uh, how the day uh, went. Went both for this session and for the other sessions. So all is not lost. I believe uh, one of the most important uh, components about this event is networking, getting to meet people, getting to catch up with their peers in the industry. So as we prepare to go to the uh, cocktail uh, session, if you are still interested, uh, remember we have other uh, sessions uh, going on who uh, are in the other rooms, uh, Bamboo and uh, the other uh, conference uh, session in uh, Urukari. Um, Bamboo is uh, still about uh, agriculture and food security. If those are your interests, uh, you are invited again to go and just uh, catch up with the rest of the uh, papers. Uh, the other session again on uh, environmental monitoring and sustainability, again in uh, Rukari Hall, is still going on. Uh, but for us who are here, uh, I think we can uh, applaud ourselves for the good uh, you know, the session that we've had and uh, for summarizing generally and finishing in good time. Yeah. Thank you. So for those who like uh, the, the talking interacting, I first would like to maybe uh, request uh, maybe if someone can maybe close for us, uh, maybe with the order of a prayer or something, and then uh, we uh, go to the uh, cocktail uh, session. Thank you. Top, 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 five star. Yeah, yeah. Top, top, five stars. Yeah, yeah.